Hey guys, welcome back to the Amplify tutorial for authentication for iOS. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Your likes, comments, and subscriptions really keep me going, so thank you so much and enjoy. Um, and while that's running, I'm going to decrease the font size now. Okay, and make sure you select yes so that you can continue. While that's running, let's start building out the UI. So here we have our application. It has nothing right now. Let's just go ahead and make the background color a easy system background. And so what we will need is three text fields for our username, password, and email. And then we also need a button to continue um, to can like register. And then we also need another button to sign in because registering and signing in are two different things. When you register, it doesn't mean you sign in. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to make an email text field first, and that's just going to be UI text field. And, you know, make sure you, if you're actually coding a real application to, you know, maybe make some standard objects like a text field or something so you don't have to repetitively write this code but i'm just going to do it because it's not that bad and this is just uh, an example anyways so we're going to change the placeholder to email uh let's do translates so yep i'm going to do some auto constraints here and if you guys ever need help with auto constraints do let me know as well i would love to help on that um, unlike some other people, I actually like working with auto constraints, although they do get frustrating at times. At times, they do. Um, I think that's good enough for our text field, so let's add three of them. User, password. Oh, and don't forget, you can indeed do a, a secure entry right here, and it'll do like the little dots uh, for you but I actually don't really like that. I'll just show you guys what I write for my password because it doesn't really matter right now. So let's change that to user. We've got our text, color, cool, cool, all good. All right, and then now we need our buttons. Sign up button. Okay, how about to say register button. And we're gonna make a UI button. Let's do UI button, return B, oops. And then we want to do the translates, auto resizing masks, so that we can do our auto constraints. Let's set the title to register for normal. And let's do text color, I guess. Title label, dot text color, is that what it is? Yep. Oh, no, no, there's an actual function for it. Yeah, there we go. Text color label. I don't even know if to do this, but oh well. And one more thing, background color. Yep, background color. Let's set that to pink. Yep, so that's our register button. And let's add a sign in button. Sign in button. Oh, gosh. And let's just name that sign in. Cool. Um, what's going on, Swift? Okay. Yep. So let's add all our stuff to our stuff, our view. Yep. Sorry, just doing some UI work, guys. Um, I know you guys aren't here for the UI, but it is necessary. We need the password field. We need the email field. We need the username field. We need the register button, and we need the sign in button. So let's check up on our Amplify push. It looks like we're all good in the back end. We can go to Cognito, and we'll probably see our user pool. So we are good there. One last thing to do with our um, UI. Let's go ahead and let's do some placement. I don't even know if I spelled that right. Okay, so let's just do some layout constraints. Yeah, and like I said, I do like working with layout constraints. If you guys have any other questions. So we have our top anchor. We're going to do this view.safelayoutguide.topanchor. Uh, constant, oops, let's just do width. 
and I like to do the UI screen for this. It's not always best practice at all. Um, it's just what I like to do. If the iPad's like the same height and width though, which they are in like pretty similar at least, uh, does not look very good. But for small phones like an iPhone or something, it looks great. So let's do that. Let's make it uh, 0 0.05 of the screen. We need a leading anchor, we need a trailing anchor. Let's do leading, trailing. Let's change this to width, width, and we can do negative width right here. So let's add our buttons. One, two, three, four, five. So those are for our three buttons and our two, oh sorry, three fields and our two buttons. So we have our user, or our password, oops, password, is it pass? Oh, it's just pass. We have our register button and we have our sign in button, which we can just post there. Cool. And this is going to be 27. I'm just going to make them two apart. Okay. So 34, we have, we're going to have, yeah, and I could definitely just reference the last thing or whatever it was, but too lazy right now. So we're just going to do it this way, the manual way, right? 46, 48, and finally 53. Cool. So, yep. That looks like we have all the UI stuff done. So let's just run it real quick. And let's go to our, let's let's go ahead and make a new file where we're waiting. And let's call it auth service so that we can finally start on what you guys came for, the auth service. And it's just gonna be a new class. I'm gonna, put it outside actually so that we can visibly see what we're looking at here but you guys do know that um, it's just these two that we're looking at right now let's import UI kit and let's do auth service let's make a new class called auth service and what we're gonna do is gonna do static we're just gonna do singleton actually so static let shared auth service so that we can you know call this anywhere in our application Let's privatize the init so no one's going to initialize a random random version of our thing. So, yep, we've got a random, uh, not random, but we've got a very simple uh, UI for our registering and signing in thing. So, And usually, you know, register and sign in won't be on the same page, but that's how I'm just going to make it for now. So, yeah, let's get started on our auth service. Oops. Nope. And oh, well, I guess I'll stop it. Let's get started on auth service. So how do we? How does this actually work? Um, well, the first thing we want to do is we want to go to Cognito actually. So let's go to AWS. Uh, let's go to Cognito. Straight to Cognito. Um, is this the right user pool? I think it is. Okay. Cool. We've got our user pool, and then we're going to actually go to Lambda, too. So go to the Lambda service, and what we're going to do is we're going to, well, for you guys, you are going to create a function up here, but what you're going to create is this Lambda function, and this is the Lambda function that I was mentioning earlier. This is the function that well, when users actually sign up, they're going to receive that code and they have to enter it before they actually become a user, right? This function right here is just going to remove that step. So whenever they register that they're going to instantly become a user and they're going to be able to sign in immediately. And I, if you guys want them to enter the code into your application, then don't do this, I guess. But uh, this is the code for if you would like them to not go through that process and make it a bit easier reduce the reduce the friction for you know user acquisition i guess so yeah this this basically just changes their um their confirmation status to true 
every single time. Um, so, yep, what you're going to do is you're going to put it in there, and then you're just going to save the function or whatever you call it in Lambda. And once you're there, once you do that, you're going to close out Lambda. You're going to come to your Cognito dashboard right here. This is your Cognito dashboard for your specific user pool. Make sure you click on your user pool. You can go to your triggers, and we're going to go to pre-sign up, and you're going to click on your Lambda function, which is auto-verify 4 for me. Um, and you're just going to go down to the bottom and save it. So once that's saved up, we're good to go there. So the users will be auto-confirmed now. That's just the quick setup that we're doing.